Hey everyone, Reed Hendricks with Fowler Ridge, and today we're going to discuss the top five lies of YouTube gun channels. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get started. The first and most unbelievable lie that's been brought to my attention is that you're not going to aim under stress. This flies completely in the face of so many documented cases that it's not even funny. And the problem is that people are getting killed because of stupid information just like this. You know, I just got done writing a book about pistol craft. Uh, it took me almost oh, more than a year. And in that, I've got sources ranging from 1875 all the way to 2014 from some of the best pistol shooters on the planet. Guys like Paul Howell, Bill Rogers, Chuck Taylor, guys like that that have a lot of shooting accomplishments and combat experience. And the funny thing about it is that they say the complete opposite, that not only are you capable of aiming under deadly force and the stress that comes along with that, but that there are thousands, thousands and thousands and thousands of cases of people using their sights during deadly force. I can tell you that all of my friends that I know that have shot people with pistols all report seeing a front sight, a sight picture, every single one of them. But what the real problem is, is that when people tell you you're not going to aim under stress, guess what you're not going to do? You're not going to aim under stress. But when it's demanded of you in practice and in training, you will. And the weird thing about it is that I found that people that have the least amount of training and proficiency teach stupid things to people that get others killed. The second top five lie that's been brought to my attention is that you, you won't be able to use your fingers under stress. This is absolutely and utterly rubbish. You know, we, we look at all of the things we do with the pistol with our hands and with our fingers. We shoot. We press and reset the trigger. We eject the magazine. We push up on the slide lock to clear type 3 stoppages. So our fingers work for all of those things, but somehow we can't press down on the slide release. Now the problem here is that people don't understand what it takes to become a proficient gun handler. They don't understand the amount of work that goes into it. And so because of their shortcomings, they'll tell people, oh no, you won't use your hands under stress. You're not going to be able to do that. I'm sorry, but it doesn't pass the sniff test at all. And once again, uh, some of the top people that I know that shoot pistols and have done it for a living for decades and that have actually been in bad situations with pistols will tell you the complete opposite, that you can. And if you practice and train the way, you can use your hands under stress during deadly force. All of them will tell you that. It's just absolute rubbish. It's utter asinine information to tell people that they can't do something under stress. No, 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 what they're really saying is, I can't do that under stress, so nobody can. Don't let other people put their limitations on you. It's absolute dog crap. The third lie that, that I've heard is that you shouldn't carry with around in the chamber. Like, okay, uh, what are you basing this off of? Let me, let me guess. They've never carried a pistol professionally. Uh, they've never actually used a pistol against violent criminals. They've never been shot at. Um, they've never really had a big degree of proficiency or anything whatsoever. So there, there's right there all your points that you need to know because you have two big assumptions about not carrying around the chamber. Number one, you're going to have the time to rack around into the chamber, which we all know is bull crap. And number two, you're going to have the physical ability to rack around into the chamber. And so in their minds, they think, oh, I'll see the, the threat coming. And it's not like I won't be wrestling with anybody. And, oh, it's not like I won't be like shot in my arm because I'm going to scan and be situationally aware. Yeah, go ahead and try that in a major city. You know, go ahead and try that uh, when you're waking up from bed from someone breaking into your house. So the problem here is that it's getting people killed because they don't understand that a pistol is a defensive tool to be used immediately and reactively against an absolute in-your-face threat that happens in less than two seconds. So I hope that you see that it's setting people up for failure carrying around without a round in the chamber. The fourth big lie that you're going to be told is that you need to learn how to shoot a rifle with a red dot first. Well, this flies in the face of every accomplished rifleman that I've ever known. Guys like Chief Warrant Officer Van Orden, who's a nationally ranked, or at least was nationally ranked, rifle shooter at one time. Um, you've got other guys like Chuck Taylor, uh, once again, who has uh, used small arms in combat extensively. Um, you've got guys like Paul Howe that teach iron sighted rifle. He does all of his demos with iron sights as well. So the best shooters that I know, okay, learned on iron sights first. And you can say, well, did the technology exist back then? Uh, well, yeah, uh, red dots, or at least red dot optical sights have been around since Vietnam. Um, the weird thing is, is that the best shooters will tell you about iron sights because of the importance of fundamentals, the importance of proper presentation, the importance of sight focus, and the overall attention that it requires while you're shooting. You cannot gain the discipline that it takes to shoot well if you start right away with something that doesn't even require sight alignment. It's absolute foolishness. And by the way, when your sight fails, 
What are you going to do if you don't know how to shoot irons? What are you going to do? Oh, I don't know what to do. Well, you better learn how to shoot your iron sights. You better learn how to have them on your gun, and you better learn how to be proficient with them. You can't get to a time where you rely on technology because all technology fails sooner or later. The fifth and final lie that I'd like to address is this, is this caliber pissing contest. Oh, you should only shoot this caliber. You should only shoot that one. Look, if it's a pistol, it's a pistol. Whichever one you shoot the best, I would. here would be my advice. Shoot the biggest caliber that you shoot well. If it fits, the gun fits your hand, if you can shoot it well, then go for it. It. it really doesn't matter what it is because at the end of the day, you're still going to have to make your hits. Uh, I would tell you that the biggest criteria is how accurately can you shoot it and how quickly can you shoot it accurately. Those are the biggest things. I would recommend definitely having a round that can penetrate the vitals of an attacker, that can penetrate uh, the spinal column if need be, that can penetrate the cranial ocular vault, that can penetrate vital organs and major blood vessels so that they can stop and leave you alone. That's what I would recommend. Uh, some calibers uh, do that better than others. So the caliber pissing contest needs to go away. I've had students that shot every kind of caliber you can imagine. Some of them uh, shot nine well, some of them shot 40 well, some shot 45 well, hell, some shot 10 millimeter well. So whichever is the largest one that you can shoot well and control, that would be my advice for you. The reason I do this video is because I'm tired of bad information getting people hurt or killed or being limited. Like they go out and they won't do these things because other people tell them that they can't or that they won't or they shouldn't. Look, it's your gunfight. That means it's your life. You know, I do a lot of police after action dash cam video a review and how they do these things to see these truths in action. It's documented proof. And these happen over and over again. You know, I'm not just talking out of my rear end. I'm a former police officer with patrol task force undercover narcotics experience. I'm a former Marine, 0351 anti-tank assault man. And to be honest with you guys, uh, I've trained with, a, with the best people out there, the best, and earned certificates and ratings out there uh, that are the mark of a very accomplished shooter. This isn't just talk. It's not theory or conjecture. And I want you guys out there to be sure that you vet the information that you have, because in the end, you're going to be the one responsible for using it in the event that you're attacked. If you found the information in the video helpful, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell for notifications. And if you want to get some training, come on out to Valor Ridge and we can help you with that. This is Reed Hendricks with Valor Ridge reminding you the lessons that we learn are written on the tombstones of others. We'll see you on the ridge.